show. Hello. You've no idea how really delighted I am to be here tonight. If I seem excited and a little flustered, well, I am. Because I've waited a long time for this date. I've been looking for a special way to entertain you. A way in which you two could participate, but without doing too much work. And then, one morning as I was reading my mail from you, the dawn broke. I got an idea. A very simple and, I think, good idea. Why not answer this mail in play form with the main character, you? And that's exactly what we're going to do. So don't be surprised if you find yourself saying tonight, Hey, look, that's me. Now, the letter that I'm going to answer tonight came to me from a young lady in New York City. And her name, well, we'll call her Carol Brown. Dear Loretta, she says, I suppose you get hundreds of letters asking for advice. Although, you don't look like a Beatrice Fairfax to me. But here I go anyway. I work in a department store here at the perfume counter. A few months ago, a young man came into the store and started sniffing the perfume bottles. Uh, would you try this, please? It's called Angel Face. I was going over the stock. I'd like to buy some perfume. Oh, certainly, sir. What would you like? What have you got? Well, uh, here's something nice. It's called Balinese Dreams. I like it. That'll be twenty-seven dollars and forty-five cents, please. After that, he started coming in every two or three days buying perfume. We had really gotten to know each other quite well by then. And then, one day... Uh, we got a wonderful new shipment in today. Yeah? It's called Orange Blossom. Magic, eh, girl? Well, I said yes, of course. And the following Saturday promised to go down to Philadelphia to meet his parents. Philadelphia. Yes, sir. He uh, thinks we're on a honeymoon. <laughs> Why should he think that? I gave him a dollar. Oh, a generous man for a 55 minute ride, huh? You nervous? Yes, a little. Oh, don't be. My family's not going to eat you, you know. I know, but. Well, I know so little about them. Keith, what are they like? Well, I can sum it up in a word. Cute. Awful. Nice? No, well, not awful nice, just awful. It's <laughs> all right, but the rest of the family. Real snob. Oh, you're kidding. No, I wish I were. No, unless your name's in who's who, they put you under who? Oh, but Keith, that's terrible. You think it's terrible? How do you think I feel? Well, what are they going to say when they find out I work in a department store? Honey, they'll probably want to open a charge account. Oh. What's your mother like? Oh, she's all right. She still treats me as if I were a small boy in short pants. Oh, well, all mothers are like that. She had her way about it. I'd be marrying the girl I went to dancing school with. And who was that? Barbara. Barbara Parlow. Is she nice? Dear, the girl you go to dancing school with is never nice. Oh. <laughs> I, I wish you'd told me all about this before. Well, I wanted to be sure you were hooked first. Oh, but that isn't fair. You want to back out? 
We can still get off the train. Oh, no, no. But, uh... I suggested we get married first and then go down to meet them, remember? Yes, but that's not the way to do it. I should meet them first and, and then get married. Uh -huh. Well, that's exactly what we're doing. Yeah. Darling. Huh? I think I could use that kiss now. <laughs> Come in, darling. Oh. You know, Jenny, it's unbelievable. You get more beautiful every day. I hope you wiped your feet good. You know your mother. Uh, yes, Jenny. Jenny, this is Miss Brown. How do you do, Jenny? <laughs> How do you do? We were all wondering what you'd look like. We didn't know what time you were coming or we'd have sent the car. I got held up at the office. Where's mother? Upstairs. We're having dinner promptly at 7. Uh, Jenny will show you into the living room, darling. I'll tell Mother you're here. Oh, all right. This way, miss. <laughs> oh. Oh. Make yourself at home, miss. Thank you. Back to Mrs. Warren's chair. Oh. <laughs> She was robbing banks. <laughs> oh, you never can tell how it is. No. All right, Miss Barbara. I'll tell Mrs. Warren. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Really, Keith, it's so inconsiderate of you bringing this strange girl here at the last minute. And... Mother, why do you keep calling her this strange girl? This is the girl I'm going to marry. I know, I know, my dear boy, but she's strange to us. Well, that's why I want you to meet her. From the way you go on, you'd think she had three heads or something. Oh, Keith, you mustn't be so sensitive. After all, I'm getting ready to meet her. And we've arranged this dinner especially for you. It doesn't sound like a very warm welcome to me. Dad would have loved her. Your father was just as wayward and impulsive as you are. He married you, didn't he? That was in one of his more serious moments. Now go down and show the young lady to her room. You may be sure I'll show her every courtesy. Mother sends her apologies, darling, but you see, she's already dressing for dinner. We always eat dinner promptly at seven. Oh. Do you always dress for dinner? Not usually, but this is a sort of a special occasion. Oh. All my aunts and uncles insisted on being invited. Oh, Keith, I hope I brought the right clothes. Oh, don't worry, darling. You look good in anything. Oh, when a man says that, he's usually not looking at the dress. Come on. Come on. Your pardon. Oh, that's quite all right. Uh, are you Carol? Yes. I'm Barbara Parlow. Oh, uh, how do you do? I had no idea they'd put you in here. I'm so in the habit of rushing in here at the last moment to see that my makeup's on straight. Oh, I see. Tell me, I hear that you work in a shop. Is that true? Yes. Oh, what kind of a shop? Well, uh, 
It's a department, sir. Uh, would you mind? I, uh, I handle the perfume counter. Oh, well, that's not too bad. <laughs> I've never known anyone who worked in a shop before, except antiques. Well, we can't all be antiques. Oh. You're very brave to come here, Miss Brown. Brave? Why? Well, the Warrens are very conservative, you know. Miss Parlow, why did you come in here? I told you. Oh, come on now, let's be honest. You came in here on purpose. You see, I overheard you talking to the maid on the phone about me. And undoubtedly, when you arrived for dinner tonight, you asked exactly where they'd put me. That's right. Mm -hmm. Frankly, I was just curious to see what you'd be like. Well, now that you've seen, what do you think? Uh, no, never mind. I think I'd rather not hear. I wonder if you know exactly what you're getting into. I know, Keith, if that's what you mean. No, that is not what I mean. You see, Mrs. Warren is the head of our community. And, uh, frankly, I just wonder if you're going to be happy here. Oh, we're not going to live here. Oh, you and not. Oh, no. No, Keith has his job in New York, and I... Made you think we were going to live here? The Warrens always have. Well, this one Warren's going to be an exception. Tell me, does his mother know? Well, I really don't know. And since it's Keith I'm marrying, I don't see how it makes very much difference. You have more courage than I have to marry Keith. Oh, don't be hard on yourself. <laughs> Maybe you've never had the chance to test your courage in that particular way. That's not true. Keith proposed to me when I was still in high school. I wouldn't have had him if he'd been handed to me on a silver platter. Well, what about the platter? <laughs> I happen to know that Mrs. Warren has already made up her mind about you. But that isn't fair. She hasn't even seen me yet. And nevertheless, uh, it's true. If you happen to look like the average shop girl, Keith wouldn't have had the courage to even bring you here in the first place. But I am the average shop girl. Oh, you know what I mean. The gun you in kind. <laughs> you know, Miss Barlow, you seem to have gotten your conception of a shop girl out of the funny papers. You know, most of the shop girls I know are just as nice as you are. I resent that. <laughs> well, so would they, probably. Look here, you seem to think that if I were the average shop girl, or that is your idea of the average shop girl, that Keith wouldn't marry me because his family wouldn't approve. Well, I've got news for you. I could walk into that room on my hands and Keith would still marry me whether his family approved or not. That's easy enough to say. It's easier to do. They're expecting Bertha for the bargain basement. That's exactly what they're going to get. Just to prove you how wrong you are. You wouldn't dare. Oh, you bet I would. And if you let one peep out of you, I'll wrap this hairbrush around your noggin. <laughs> and Eleanor, Charles, please sit down. You're all going to like her, I know. She's the sweetest, simplest, most charming girl I've ever met. Well... Hi, everybody. Oh. I'm sorry I'm late, but I had some trouble with my girdle. Carol. No, no, don't tell me. I want to guess. Now, let me see. This is Mother. Hello, Mother. You know, you look just like your pictures. At least I haven't seen any of your pictures, but if I had, I'm sure you'd look just like them. And this is Aunt Eleanor. Howdy, ma'am. How do you do? And this is Uncle Charles. <laughs> Welcome, my dear, to a very dull family. Aw. That's Uncle Ben. How do you no do? No use talking to him. He can't hear a word. Oh, lucky man. <laughs> and this is Mrs. Ben. How do you do, ma'am? I believe you've met Miss Parlow. Oh, have I met Miss Parlow? I'll say I have. We have a little secret, haven't we? Don't you tell now. Charles. I know. You're going to ask me what I want to drink. Can you make a Coney Island whiz bang? Whiz bang? Yeah. <laughs> One part gin, two parts bourbon, and three parts crazy. <laughs> You'll have fun. 
Christ, I hope. Champagne? Ooh, I love champagne, don't you? You bet. <laughs> Uh, mother. Keith, go along. The punch. It's nearly seven. Oh, goodness, is it that late? My, how time flies. Hey, happy she. Oh, sure, honey. <laughs> Charles. <Pout. laughs> I must be slow. Oh, that's because you're from Philadelphia. <laughs> Brown, would you mind telling me why you wear your wristwatch on your ankle? Why? Well, so I won't get it wet when I wash my hands. Why, she say, so it won't get wet when she washes her hands. Keith, yes. don't stand there dawdling. Go and see about the drinks. <laughs> Miss Brown, Keith tells me your father is in the oil business. Is that so? Oh, yes, ma'am. Retail. Retail? Yeah, he owns his own pump. Oh, how nice. I always say that once the well is actually drilled, that's half the battle. Where is it? On the corner of Tenth and Boyle. <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a very charming dress you have on. It really looks much better with a good suntan. Where do you usually go in summer? Up on the roof. I have an actress up there where I take my sun bath. Tell me. Aren't you afraid of airplanes? Not unless they're Russian. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what could have happened to the drinks. You know, I'm so glad we're having drinks. Because from what she said, I thought we were all going to end up with spinach juice. Uh, I'm afraid I don't quite understand. Well, she said you were so conservative and all that. But I knew you being Keith's mother. <laughs> you couldn't possibly be the old stick. She made you out to be. Barbara, did you say... Yes, yeah, she said that you call the tune, Miss Family, and everybody else did the dancing. But I just said to her, well, I don't dance. Mrs. Warren, I really must go. I have a splitting headache. <laughs> oh, you sit right down here. I'm very good at fixing headaches. Now, you sit back there and relax. I used to have... Oh, a brother who was... No, indeed, it does not. Five, nine. Mrs. Warren, I really must go. Of course, dear. Ask Keith. He'll drive you home. Oh, goodbye, honey. Oh, she's just like a little flower, isn't she? Well, uh, I think I'd like a cigarette. Ah, uh, now, let me see. Um, have you got a match, Mother? Oh, allow me. <laughs> oh, thank you kindly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Miss Brown, where did my son ever happen to run into you? I was demonstrating a new scent that day. Perfume, you know. It was called Kiss in the Dark, and he gets one whiff of it. And he says, what's that? And I says, it's just a kiss in the dark. And he took it from there. If you'll excuse me, I find I have a headache, too. Oh, goodness. Must be an epidemic. Are you all right? No, I'm not all right. But I, uh, nor am I. <laughs> Miss Warren, please, wait a minute. Please don't go. Uh, I was only fooling. Fooling? Well, yes, yes. You see, Miss Paolo said that, well, she said you were all expecting me to be a cheap girl and that I wouldn't stand a chance of getting Keith. Well, naturally, this made me mad, and, and so I, well, I just put on this little act to prove her wrong, that's all. But you haven't proved her wrong. You're a cheap, conniving woman, and I wouldn't let Keith marry you if you were the last girl on earth. But, Mrs. Warren, Keith's a grown boy now. I really don't see why you have very much to say about it. I have this much to say about it. If he proceeds with the ceremony without my permission, I'll cut him off without a cent. Oh, but we don't want your money. Oh, Keith's doing very well now, and so am I. How long do you think Keith would last with the money he's making with that brokerage firm? He's always been used to luxury, and he can't get along without it. If it came to a choice between the two things, you'd very soon see where his heart is. Oh, I think you're wrong. Are you willing to take a chance on it? Yes, yes, I am. Then leave this house immediately. Pack up your things and get out now. I'll have the chauffeur drive you to the station. <laughs> The 
pardon me, lady, but is this seat occupied? What on earth have you done to yourself? That I'm aiming to get married, and I got chained up for my doll. <laughs> Well, you comb your hair back the way it belongs this instant. <laughs> Not until you introduce me to your family. Oh, darling, I'm sorry for what I did. The marriage is for keeps, and I just had to be sure. Well, honey, you are sure now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She says, Well, Loretta, so far was so good. But now my conscience is beginning to bother me, and I want to be sensible about it. After all, she is Keith's mother. He says not to worry about it, but somehow or other, I just can't help it. Am I crazy? Oh, no, Carol. No, you're not crazy. And incidentally, neither am I. I know I said earlier in the evening that I was going to answer your letter in play form. But honestly, we became so fascinated with your story that... Well, now I'm going to do it this way. You're right. She is your husband's mother. And I think she has a right to know you, as Keith does, as you really are. A nice girl. You know, there's one place that you can go for advice and always find the right answer. It was written so long ago. And yet, no human question is new to it. I've marked this passage. Listen, Carol. House and wealth are an inheritance from fathers, but a sensible wife is a gift from the Lord, from the book of Proverbs. Well, I've learned one thing tonight. Anticipation is not always greater than realization. I've had a wonderful time, and I hope you have too. Good night.